sunrise over tiger country. A sambar stag eats in peace, unaware for now that in the sun-striped shadows a tiger is waiting. The tiger is one of the most beautiful, impressive, and powerful predators in the world. It is also a renowned man-eater. More people have been killed by tigers than any other large cat. One tigress claimed 436 lives before she was shot. As a hunter, this cat is formidable. Massive forelimbs and shoulders give it the strength to knock over and pin down victims much larger than itself. silently through the forest, relying on stealth to sneak up on its quarry. It places each enormous paw carefully to avoid snapping a twig which would give its position away. Stalking ever closer, the tiger waits until it's about 60 to 30 feet from its victim. Then it explodes from the undergrowth with an incredible burst of speed. The tiger is the biggest, most elusive, and fearsome of the great cats. Unlike a lion, it is quite capable of bringing down large prey by itself, so it generally hunts alone. It's rarely seen in broad daylight, being by instinct a night prowler. The largest number of tigers live in the jungles of the Far East. They can survive in coastal swamps, rainforests, woodland, and snow-covered mountains. When this archive film was taken in Siberia, they were considered a serious threat to farmers. Hunting and the capture of young animals for zoos led to their decline. <laughs> The Siberian tiger is the largest of the eight known subspecies. There are only a few left in isolated forests in Russia. Now fully protected, their numbers are increasing. It is thought that tigers originated in the snows of Siberia. From there, they were driven south by the Ice Age to the near and far east. Only 50 years ago, the eight known races of tiger occupied this area. By 1975, their range had shrunk to this. Indochina held around 2,000. India, the traditional stronghold, was down to 1,800 tigers. The thick forests of Sumatra hid about 800. The lowlands of Nepal contained 200. The Sundarbans of Bangladesh held around 20. There were 12 Javan tigers left. Iran and the Caspian area still continue to produce rumors of tigers, but no definite confirmation that they exist. 
China once had thousands, but they're essentially unprotected. There are probably less than 200 today. The Bali tiger is now extinct. Prehistoric saber-tooth tigers lived 30 million years ago. Their massive upper canines were blade-like and were used to sever the windpipe and jugular vein of its victims. Over the ages, tigers have always captured the imagination. The illustrator of this early book of beasts had obviously never seen a tiger. But the Romans had. This 2,000-year-old mosaic comes from Cyprus. The Mongols who invaded India in the 14th century were keen tiger hunters. Savage as this scene is, they understood conservation. One emperor even laid down plans for a tiger reserve. A descendant of the Mughals built this life-sized musical tiger devouring a European. Known as Tipu's tiger, it was the favorite after-dinner entertainment of Tipu Sultan, the ruler of Mysore in southern India. Tipu had a superstitious reverence for the tiger, only exceeded by his loathing for the invading British. Tales of this supreme predator's power and size were often wildly exaggerated. Many early works of art were based more on fantasy than fact. Throughout the Far East, the tiger is a magic animal. In Malaya, a single whisker ground up and added to a stew containing tiger flesh or bone is said to kill a man. In Indonesia, tiger milk is a cure for sore eyes and powdered bone for a dog bite. This is Tiger Balm Garden, an extraordinary monument to a well-known ointment. There is practically nothing that this panacea won't fix. Coughs, stomachache, nausea, and even bad breath. The advertising industry often capitalizes on the selling power of the tiger. One of the most famous symbols is the tiger you put in your tank. Seventy years ago, there were 40,000 tigers in India. Today, only a few thousand remain. This magnificent predator was regarded as royal game and hunted by kings. This rare early color film was shot for his own personal record by Lord Linlithgow, Viceroy of India in the late 30s. Few have ever watched a live hunt. The hunt has been set up in his honor and that of the First Lady, the Vice Ren. A tiger hunt was part of the hospitality of that vanished era. Today, it would cause a public outrage. But to have refused an Eastern prince's invitation to such a hunt would have been a diplomatic insult. And in those days, tigers were not rare. Rules were strict and the bags usually reasonable. There were excesses. One Maharaja accounted for 1,150 tigers in his lifetime. Everyone is mounted on elephant back, including the beaters who drive the quarry towards the guns.
The hunters rode in howdahs, their high basketwork sides giving some protection against tiger attack, as well as a steady platform from which to fire. A U-shaped ring of white cloth serves as the tiger trap. The beaters drive the quarry through the open side while the hunters wait at the narrowest end. The tiger can easily jump over or tear through the material barrier, but it's never seen anything like it before. To it, the cloth is an impenetrable, encircling wall. knows it's cornered. To save its own life, it's as likely to attack as to make a run for it. In desperation, it claws the rear elephant. scene is shocking. But in those days, killing tigers was regarded as no worse than hunting foxes or bears. The hunters wanted quarry to shoot, so they preserved large areas of tiger country. Today, former hunting grounds are the main places in which the tiger survives. By protecting their habitat, the hunters help to conserve this formidable cat. This, rather than the gun, is the weapon that is most responsible for the tiger's steady decline. Throughout its range, the forests are being clear-cut. In India, the tiger has almost complete protection from firearms, but the chainsaw is as deadly as a bullet. No forest, no wild game, no tiger. This starving tiger cub was found in a field of sugarcane. Its mother had been forced to give birth in the only dense vegetation left to her. But as the cane cutters moved in, she had to abandon her cub. Overpopulation is a serious problem in the Far East. Tigers and people do not mix. One loses out. Inevitably, it is the tiger. Unfortunately, despite the efforts of rangers and vets, this cub died after a couple of weeks. Tigers can only survive in undisturbed forests. Tiger Haven at the Dudwa National Park in northern India are tiger reserves. Dudwa has forest, full protection by the Indian government, and a stock of wild tigers. It also has the full-time concern of Billy Arjun Singh, a passionate conservationist. He believes that tigers bred in captivity can help to increase wild populations, provided their habitat is protected. Inside the crate is a tiger cub which was born in an English zoo. Billy hopes she will eventually live free and wild in India. The cub has flown from England and made a long, exhausting journey from Delhi. Her name is Tara, which means star, and she is three months old. Until this day, she's lived behind bars 
From now on, her life will be one of increasing freedom. Arjan Singh is one of India's leading conservationists and actively involved in Project Tiger, an all-out drive to save the animal in the wild. Project Tiger has been successful, with more than 4,000 tigers now in India. Arjan Singh has an extraordinary rapport with big cats. He has already successfully reared and returned two leopards to the jungle. But even for him, teaching a zoo-born tiger to go wild is not a light undertaking. From the moment she arrived, Tara showed signs of her hunting instincts. When she stalked a tame buffalo, she was careful to approach from the rear, just like a wild tiger. Tigers don't become fully independent until they're at least two years old. Tara's education might take even longer. If it succeeds, it will be well worth it. Natural repopulation of tigers is slow. Usually only half the litter of two to four cubs survive. She had to get used to living with elephants and vice versa. The elephant is distinctly uneasy at being followed so closely by a tiger even such a small one. This could have been the most dangerous moment of all. Harriet is one of the leopards that Billy has already taught to live wild, but she often returns to the farm. Fortunately, she was willing to accept Tara. So Billy started Tara's training by taking her for walks in the forest. Tigers are naturally solitary, and Tara almost ignored Harriet, who sometimes joined them. These early walks served a useful purpose, to get Tara used to the sights and sounds of the forest. Sights like the deer she'd one day hunt. After a month, she was introduced to a large herd of swamp deer to see what she'd make of them. Arjan Singh has no illusions about the future for tigers. He repeatedly points out that less than half of India's 4,000 tigers live in protected forests. The remainder he calls forgotten tigers, safe from firearms and the now illegal trade in tiger skins, but completely at the mercy of anyone who wishes to destroy their homes for a short-term profit in timber. He hopes his government will act to protect the forests in all India's national parks and sanctuaries. Otherwise, his efforts to release captive tigers into the wild will be pointless.
This time the swamp deer escape. But Tara is safe at Dudwa and has plenty of time to refine the instincts she will need to kill for herself. The tiger's striped coat breaks up its outline and is the perfect camouflage against a background of tall grasses and long shadows in the forest. But its chances of catching deer in the open are slim. In the daytime, the tiger seeks shade. The white spots on the ears are thought to be used during threat displays as a signal of aggression. From the tip of its tail to the end of its nose, a big male Bengal tiger can measure 10 feet, while the Siberian tigers can reach over 13 feet. Its canine teeth, used for killing and holding, can be up to five inches long. The razor-sharp claws are retractable and used to grasp hold of victims. The tongue is rough to help scrape flesh off the bones of its prey. A big Indian male weighs five to six hundred pounds, a female around 350. In general, they keep to their home ranges, which may cover as much as 25 square miles. They let each other know they are around by roaring and scent marking. They produce a strong smelling substance from glands near the base of their tail. These scent signals warn rivals to keep out and help males find a mate. Tigers can climb trees, but are cumbersome and ungainly in the branches, and normally stay on the ground. They scratch trees to mark their territory, and probably to clean and sharpen their claws as well. They often urinate on the tree, leaving a scent signal to reinforce the visual claw marks. Marsh crocodiles, called muggers, live primarily on fish and small mammals. They have been known to kill humans. Tigers ignore them. They're strong swimmers and too big even for a large male crocodile to tackle. Of all the cat family, they take most readily to water and are rarely found far from it. In the Sundarbans, a swampy mangrove area on the coast, the tigers regularly commute between islands, swimming confidently across open water. Once ashore, 
the tiger melts into the background, its stripes hiding it effectively even among green reeds. At midday, tigers like to lie in the shallows to cool down. Villagers also use the river for washing. This is one of the places they're most vulnerable to attack. Most tigers regard humans with respect, if not fear, and do their best to avoid them. It was once thought that all tigers were potential man-eaters, but very few are. A crocodile is more dangerous. One expert estimated that perhaps three in every thousand tigers turned man-eater. They did so usually because they were wounded or old and could no longer hunt their natural prey. Accidental encounters between people and tigers can lead to fatalities. A surprised cat often attacks in self-defense rather than retreat. The startled animal quickly learns that humans are easy prey. The tiger is mainly a night hunter, but it's often active at dawn and dusk. It feeds on a wide variety of game, from deer and monkeys to birds, frogs, and termites. uses all available cover to stalk deer, its favorite prey. They also lie in wait to set up an ambush. But despite their patience and concentration, only one stalk in 20 ends in a successful kill. Though a tiger can eat 100 pounds of meat in one meal, it's an opportunist, catching anything within grasp, including gray langurs.
is instantaneous. Because tigers are essentially nocturnal, intensive preparation and highly specialized camera equipment is needed. Traditionally, hunters build a hide high in a tree and sit there all night if necessary until the tiger passes below. To film them, this hide was built at their level on the ground. An image intensifier attached to the camera enables normal lenses to work in the dark. It was originally developed as a gun sight for sniping in total darkness. Their transport returns to base, leaving the night to Dieter Plage and Mike Price, the camera team. The intensifier gives a rare view of the secret world of the nighttime jungle. On the far bank, an Indian one-horned rhinoceros looms out of the darkness. It is cautious. It knows that tigers prowl at night. Inside the hide, the tension builds. They're so intent on the rhino, they don't realize a tiger is very close. victim is a young buffalo. The tiger drags its victim away into the undergrowth to feed out of sight of scavengers and potential rivals. For the camera team, this was a close encounter, but for Mike Price, things were to get even more hair-raising. Later, he climbed alone to a hide he had set up on a trail in Chittawan National Park. In this former royal hunting area, tigers have learned that they are now safe to move around in daylight. Tigers everywhere were probably far less nocturnal before they were hunted.
Patience is the key to observing the tiger in the wild. Suddenly, a tiger. Even though less than three in a thousand eat people, this tiger is too close for comfort. As it closed in on the hide, Price took his camera off the tripod and held it by hand to focus. He said afterwards that he was deafened by his own heartbeats. When he looked out of the other slit, the tiger was looking in. He found it impossible to keep the camera steady. The tiger was one of the 997 non-man-eaters and was probably just as scared. In the pale light following sunrise, Long lanes of white cloth are set up, very similar to those used in the old tiger hunts. The white cloths form a long funnel the narrow end of which is left open. The aim is to drive a tiger into a confined area where it can be shot, but this time with an anesthetic dart. The objective is to fit a tiger with a radio collar so it can be tracked. Just as in a tiger hunt, the beaters are mounted on elephants. The tiger is somewhere ahead, unaware of the trap. caught up in the confusion. Elephants can sense the tiger and are nervous. <coughs> Only the tiger seems relatively calm.
As the tiger reaches the open end of the funnel, it's within range of both the camera and the gun. It takes about five minutes before the drug begins to work. It's vital the team keeps up with the darted tiger. If they lose it, it could die. The now anesthetized victim is a magnificent adult female. The only way to follow a tiger in dense jungle and learn about its behavior is to track it by radio. A pillow of leaves prevents the unconscious tiger from breathing in dust. One thing that has been discovered by radio tracking is that, though tigers are essentially loners, they are a lot more sociable than previously thought. In most situations, individuals only come together briefly to mate. Afterwards, male and female go their separate ways. The three resident males darted at Chitawan mated with any female in season. Adult females were either pregnant or had dependent young all the time. The darted tiger is photographed so it can be recognized in the future. Tigers can also be identified by their pug marks, so they're accurately measured and any distinguishing features noted, as are their canine teeth. Panting is a harmless side effect of the drug. The tigress is given water to keep her cool. The radio collar is carefully fitted so that it won't rub. It is hoped that the collar will be retrieved by a later darting. Failing that, it will fall off on its own after two years. Each miniature transmitter has a different wavelength so that collared tigers can be identified and their individual movements tracked. The transmitter is checked to ensure it's giving out a strong signal. The tigress is left to sleep off the anesthetic. It was during her recovery that Mike Price found himself in serious danger.
As the tigress was beginning to come to, he ran out of film and had to climb down. Tigris was more alert than he had expected. Luckily, the drug hadn't entirely worn off. Radio tracking is often done from light aircraft. In Nepal, there is another form of transport more readily available. The signals can't be picked up from as great a distance from an elephant but an elephant can get much closer to a tiger and researchers can study behavior which would be impossible to observe from the air. From an elephant, the range of a transmitting tiger is anything from two miles to 30 yards. As the sun sets over the Himalayas and tiger country, the total darkness of extinction could fall over one of the world's most magnificent predators. If tigers are to survive, they need protected reserves and a management plan for the future. This remains in the hands of governments, but people can make a difference by supporting conservation efforts. Deer will be no better off if they lose their ancient enemy. The land that supports the tiger is vital to them too. In Chittawan National Park, prey is still so plentiful, it's one of the few places left where four tigers can be seen sharing a kill. Tiger is cautious, tough, and truly magnificent. As the largest and most powerful of its kind, it reigns supreme among the great cats, and it ranks alongside the world's most impressive predators. Mm -hmm.